Chapter 16 Send lambs as tribute to the ruler of the land, from Selah across the desert to the mount of the daughter of Zion. Like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, so are the women of Moab at the fords of the Arnon. Give us counsel, render a decision, make your shadow like night at high noon. Hide the fugitives, do not betray the refugees, let the Moabite fugitives stay with you, be their shelter from the destroyer. The oppressor will come to an end, and destruction will cease. The aggressor will vanish from the land. In love, a throne will be established. In faithfulness, a man will sit on it, one from the house of David, one who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. We have heard of Moab's pride, her overweening pride and conceit, her pride and her insolence, but her boasts are empty. Therefore the Moabites wail. They wail together for Moab. Lament and grieve for the men of Kir Hareseth. The fields of Heshbon wither, the vines of Sibma also. The rulers of the nations have trampled down the choicest vines which once reached Jazer and spread toward the desert. Their shoots spread out and went as far as the sea. So I weep as Jazer weeps for the vines of Sibma. O Heshbon, O Eliela, I drench you with tears. The shouts of joy over your ripened fruit and over your harvests have been stilled. Joy and gladness are taken away from the orchards. No one sings or shouts in the vineyards. No one treads out wine at the presses, for I have put an end to the shouting. My heart laments for Moab like a harp, my inmost being for Kir Hareseth. When Moab appears at her high place, she only wears herself out. When she goes to her shrine to pray, it is to no avail. This is the word the Lord has already spoken concerning Moab. But now, the Lord says, Within three years, as a servant bound by contract would count them, Moab's splendor and all her many people will be despised, and her survivors will be very few and feeble.